Jessica, be careful watching the- Ah! Oh, no, it's too late. She's being brainwashed by masculine women. If only Jessica had a better role model. Anastasia. Anastasia is a wonderful woman. She is feminine, kind, and loving. She embodies so many beautiful traits. Look at some of these clips of female self-improvement YouTubers. So we should start saying, okay, are you a brokey? Yeah, I don't want you, brokey. I am not working towards my goals as hard as I should. And it infuriates me. Think with your head and not with your emotions. We as women need to stop thinking with our emotions. We need to start thinking with our head. Throughout my time doing this work for young men, I've often been asked by the young men that I help, is there a female version of me that they can send to their sisters and to their girlfriends? And the answer is yes, but not in the way that you think. There are female self-improvement grind YouTubers. There are like women who talk about the same things that I do. But that's not what you'd probably want to find. That's not what women in the world need. Women don't need masculine woman, like, oh yeah, you know, just just like be, be, be a strong, women don't need that shit, let's be honest. What most women need is feminine role models. This is the interesting thing. Why is there not many real feminine women posting content? Why is there not many real feminine women who are going viral on social media? Because they're not making content like this. To do well on social media, you need to have like a masculine, purposeful, goal-orientated brain. You have to be in grind mode. You have to stay on top of trends. You have to get like a fuck ton of views. And often you've got to sell a little bit of your soul to stay relevant. A real authentic feminine woman doesn't embody those kinds of traits. To her, it would seem completely unattractive to play this game, a completely unhealthy for her. A woman who's really in tune with her feminine energy will become hyper aware of feelings of like sickness, stress, hurt, pain, and even disease when she tries to play the masculine game. I sound crazy for like the words I'm using here, but he, you know, he's explaining things in a weird way. Everything I've learned comes from spiritual texts, like the book, The Way of the Superior Man, which breaks down what masculine and feminine energy is. If you don't want to take my word for it, just look into the spiritual people who understand masculine and feminine energy way more than any of us, like normal people who, you know, who sometimes meditate, but like we're not actually part of like those spiritual motherfuckers. And the teacher that I personally like, his name is David Data. What I've learned from his books is that women have had to give up their authentic feminine energy to find their place in the world of feminism and in the world where women are, are basically required to work. Maybe I'll make a, a separate video talking about the brutal life path that women have to go through. Either they have to risk being the sort of desirable feminine woman and hope that a masculine successful man marries them and that's how like, you know, they're okay with finances. Or they have to abandon their feminine parts of themselves and claim masculine energy to live in this sort of masculine work focused world and basically sacrifice their health their spiritual health and their sexual energy health by doing so for women it's like it's kind of like a lose-lose up until we as men stand up and we get more men who are actually like capable in the world which is like what i'm doing with my job i seem like i'm, I'm sure there'll be some feminists reacting to this and thinking that i'm some evil hateful guy if they weren't so unintelligent and quick to make judgments they'd see that i've made a thousand videos on developing men to basically become like better husbands fathers and partners for women but they'll see this as like toxic misogynist hateful whatever the truth is that i've yet to see one good like role model for women on social media i'm sure there is like you know some big celebrities or whatever that i, I don't know about celebrities or anything but i'm just thinking about like youtube from the YouTube female self-improvement creators that I've seen, the truth is they actually give some really good advice if a woman wants to abandon her feminine energy and make money. Then, like, if you want to play that game, yeah, sure, watch these YouTubers and they'll help you make money. But the women who, who follow these kinds of creators will always experience, like, this, this lack, this need to be fulfilled in ways that their career will never give them. Because inside of almost all women is far more genetic feminine energy than masculine. But if they do want to make money, then they've got to become masculine. And, and so they go and find these creators online who are popping off. So like that YouTuber, The Wizard Liz, she has an incredible channel to study as a YouTuber. She's, I think she's on 5 million subscribers. 
in 30 videos. Her first video got like a million views. It's fucking insane. She's phenomenal at capturing attention. And when I broke it down, you know, I was like analyzing her channel and I thought, okay, why is she popping off? She's not posted like, you know, um, titles that usually get a, a lot of views. She hasn't even made thumbnails or anything. The reason why she's popping off is because there was a market for masculine women of the world to have like a masculine woman who's who's got high status basically she's a very attractive girl and she gives great advice on being more masculine which makes her very high status amongst her peers of like masculine women or like basically women who are adopting masculine energy to fit into this world and there's a lot of them i'd honestly say that right now in the modern world, there's more women who are trying to become, like who need to become masculine than there are women to become feminine. Because like, what would a feminine woman do? Imagine this to yourself, you know, that like dream desirable woman, the feminine woman, what would she actually do in, in, in the world right now? She would need to work and provide for herself and for her family. And if you need to work, then she needs to adopt more masculine behaviors and thought patterns. Now there's certainly jobs and careers out there, even businesses that, can be a bit more receptive towards feminine energy. So of course, like being a teacher with young children is of course gonna allow her to be more into a feminine energy than be, um, being a businessman, entrepreneur, YouTuber. But even then, if you imagine one of the most wholesome careers like a feminine woman could get into is like being a teacher for young children, even then she has to stick to KPIs and corporate structure. Even then she has to adopt so much more masculine energy than she was genetically supposed to have, which means she's basically like killing the authentic part of herself to make money. And if she wants to level up in this, if she starts to value money, which is a kind of a normal thing to do these days, and she starts to, you know, see how everyone, if she starts to see how everyone will positively reinforce and promote the people who are making money, as if basically, if she starts to, to believe money is a really good thing that she should make more of, she's going to start to realize she needs to become more masculine to make more money. Because the more feminine a woman is, the less she's going to play this career game. This is also interestingly, like it reminds me of a belief that I had. This is why you don't see any genuinely like spiritual people who are popping off on social media. Like the real, like go and look at the teacher I told you, David Data. Go and find me one fucking podcast he's done. I would love to watch it. They don't do podcasts. Real like fucking authentic people, like real spiritual people don't do fucking podcast interviews, any of that stuff. You won't find it. He's done a couple of like seminar talks where like, you know, he, he's done like some kind of classroom teaching. Okay, that's awesome. But he's not there doing a run of podcasts or anything. No feminine woman's doing that because that's not authentic to them. So basically the only kind of women that you see who are popping off on this space of self-improvement are those masculine ones. And and they're the ones giving advice on women on like how to live their lives, how to improve their lives. And it's like, all you're doing is just ruining the world more and teaching women to basically be like shittier versions of men. But I don't blame them because this is how most women need to find their place in the world because most men are too weak to create that place for their women. Maybe the ideal situation is we, we realize how our stupidity of this individualism being against being in, in relationships that love is a dependency all this bullshit we're supposed to be dependent on each other anyone who studied a few psychology books know this we're supposed to be dependent on other humans to consider that you should be like this lone wolf that you should be this masculine woman who doesn't need a man is a fucking mental illness the same way it is for the guys in my space the sigma male red pill guys who want to stay single who don't want to be with girls who want to be on like yeah i'm on semen retention i'm not talking to girls ever again i'm a sigma male i don't care about girls i'm on monk mode all this all this shit it's like if it's going to be a sh for a short amount of time because you're leveling up fine so if you're going to say i'm going to go on monk mode because i'm not ready to attract a woman right now and i can't get, like be the kind of partner she needs absolutely that's that's actually really mature of you but there's people who are literally saying that for the rest of their lives, they don't care about being in relationships because they're just happier being single. That's a fucking mental illness and the amount of like role models who are pushing this onto young people. And you know, like these role models have got such a level of status with followers, with attractiveness, with, you know, like their clout and everything. They, there's a 13 year old girl watching these like female self-improvement YouTubers and realizing, okay, so these high status girls are telling me that they're all single, that they all make their own money, honey, and all this bullshit, boss babe type of bullshit. And the new generation of young women are being conditioned to think that it's cool to basically be fucking lonely. 
And I'm sure that some some of these women will like react or whatever and say like, oh, but we're not lonely. I've got real friends. I don't need a man. Oh. And the thing is with these women, like what I'd say to them if they're watching this, like, you know, the masculine kind of women who are hurt by men, I'd say like, I, I actually agree with you that like most men are not good partners. I totally, most men have never even read a book on love. How fucking like stupid is that? So most men, including like the attractive Chad, um, successful guys, they fucking suck at being in relationships. So I don't blame most women for thinking that they're better off being single because the the overwhelming majority of women are probably better off being single right now. But that's not the phrase that you should keep in mind. The phrase you should keep in mind is when I meet like a guy who's genuinely authentically loving and he's such like a man of character and he's he makes my life better, then of course it's a no-brainer that I'll get into a relationship with him and I'd love to be more into my feminine. And if he makes more than enough money, that also gives me the space to then be a full-time mother, which could be amazing. But too many women have this kind of mindset, this masculine mindset, that they've been in a relationship with some guys who haven't been so great at the skill of love. And so they've, they've got this like binary thinking of like, oh, well, you know, like relationships suck. No, the relationships you've been in, honey, suck because you were half of the problem. Not only your own baggage that you brought, but the fact that you keep attracting dickhead after dickhead who hasn't even read the book on self-improvements. So for all the girls who say, oh, you know, men ain't shit, men are this, men are this. Yeah, a lot of men are fucking losers. I know it because I've done a thousand videos and I've helped millions of guys. I know a lot of men are a waste of space. I know a lot of men aren't on self-improvement. I know a lot of men work hard, make a lot of money, and they're still fucking assholes. I know this. But so are you, boss babe. So are you. If you keep attracting the same kind of guys, that says more about you. Because those guys are just living their lives and they're enjoying, like, like fucking these women every now and then. Because they're degenerates, they love that stuff. But here you are, degenerate yourself, these masculine women who are all hurt by men. Because you keep attracting the same kind of guy. There's women out there who have absolutely loving relationships. There's women out there who, like, literally think that love and, and men are beautiful beings. I know them. I've met these kinds of women and they're amazing human beings to be around. So there's genuinely women out there who have a healthy view towards like man and love. And there's men out there who have the same kind of healthy view towards it. That's like 1% of the population. And then the, the rest of the population is basically these like sort of red pill, alpha female, alpha male idiots who just hate each other, but they can't stop fucking each other. That's basically what it is. When you see these like self-improvement YouTube, female YouTubers, and they're always complaining about guys and saying that women need more independence, they're the exact same as the fucking degenerate red pillars. They're all the same. They're just fucking like absolute idiots who have not even read a single book on relationships wondering why like oh, all women are this women are this guys are this guys are this it's like you're shit at the skill of love like you fucking suck you've not even read oh girls saying like you know they're the same girls will say oh but yeah i've had therapy therapy doesn't fucking count you didn't get better because of therapy you might have like talked about some sensitive stuff fine but your skill of love is trash because you don't even realize your own feminine energy now, I'm done speaking to the masculine women. I'm done speaking to the, the guys, the degenerates and stuff. I'm talking directly, if there is any, to the young feminine girls who are watching this. Maybe you're 12, 13, 14 years old and you're trying to find your, your place in the world. And let me just explain it to you how life is going to work for you. There's basically two paths that you can go on as a young woman. You need to find a way to have like your finances sorted. And so there's two paths for that. One is that you develop those masculine traits yourself and you get really good at like the, your career or business and you're able to basically pay for your own bills. And this is what most women are doing. This is what your school system is going to pressure you to do. So as you go through your school system, they'll pressure you to go to like college, to get a good degree and everything. And if you said like your future job, your ideal job was to be like a housewife or a mother, you'd almost be laughed at in your class of how absurd that would be to say. And again, we don't actually blame the people who would think it's weird for you to say that, you know, you want to be a full-time mother because one, it is it's quite unique these days because a lot of women are too scared to say that and also too there's just not that many men in the world who could give you that life and so that's the second path the first path is you become masculine and you make money yourself and then that has loads of negatives which we'll talk about soon but the second path the second path is that you actually stay really feminine you stay like way more aware of your sort of authentic genetic response to the world 
The way to find that out is really to turn off your phone, your computer, and to sit in your empty room, maybe with just a journal, just a piece of paper and a pen, and ask yourself what you really want. And constantly just ask yourself, is this what I want? Or is this what I think like society, like my sister, my mother, the, the girls I watch on social media, the, the hot girls in school, is this what they would validate me for? Because on average, the majority of women, if they put themselves in that sort of silent, kind of isolated mode for a, a moment to write down what they really want in life, a lot of them would just say like, I actually don't want a full-time job. Like my mother seems so miserable. If you just wrote it, even if it sounds unrealistic, most likely you probably would write something like, if I could be with a man who made so much money that like, I wouldn't have to actually go work. And I could just like be his wife and that was my job. And then when we have children, I could just be a mother. That would be my ideal like life. Many women would actually say that, but they don't actually want to admit it because one, they think they'll be judged by other women and other people. And two, they just think it's unreasonable. I'm telling you right now, both of those things are actually true. You will be judged by other people, but fuck them. They're miserable working full time, commuting in the rain. Who cares what like that random girl says, right? And two, it's very rare to meet the kind of guy who can do that. It absolutely is, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. And so you need to decide which risk you're willing to take, which life you're willing to suffer for. Do you want to suffer in the kind of life where you have to betray your sort of natural feminine impulse to just be like a full-time mother and you want to go work full-time for like some boss and you want to go commute out into the cold, in the rain, taking public transport, working at some like random typing job or whatever that you don't even give a shit about just so you can come home at 6 p.m., maybe go to the gym and then sleep and then do it again tomorrow. And then you get weekends off, but on the weekends, you've got to do all the chores that you couldn't do on the weekdays. So your, your entire life is basically you just being like a slave for this company that you don't care about. You've got to suffer for that. Or do you want to suffer with the risk that if you become way more feminine, which maybe I'll explain to do in a second, that then you might be able to attract the kind of guy who could look after you and create that life with you. But the risk is that you might not attract him. The risk is that you might attract him and then something happens and, you, you know, you, the risk is that you don't know how to make money. And so if you divorce or if he passes away, then you're kind of stuck as well. So in both life paths that you have, there is going to be a risk. Absolutely. And so it's a big decision to make right now, but I just ask you to just keep this kind of decision in mind. What kind of life would I want to suffer for? Would I want to suffer and have the risk of, you know, like not knowing how to make money? But the life I get to have is that where I'm a full-time mother and my full-time job is waking up and being with my children. My commute is going from my bedroom to my children's bedroom. My uniform is like my, my bathrobe and my little girl's wearing her little pink dolphin bathrobe or something. And my full-time job is basically just teaching my little children like how, how to be good human beings. You're going to have to experience like risks and suffering in whatever life path you take. If I was going to give you some advice and you don't have to take it because obviously I'm a man. I don't know what it's like being a woman. But if I was going to give you advice from my 26 years of, it, of experience in this world, what I would say to you is I, I believe the, that's not even I believe. I know for certainty that the reward of the sort of motherhood, feminine energy life path is far higher than the best reward of like the masculine energy career. The best case scenario for like, you know, the masculine energy is that like you make a good amount of money, but you still are losing like all of your time working in like a job that you don't want, still commuting, still going to this random like um, office space or something. That's the best case scenario is like your income's like 50K a year, 100K a year, nice. Best case scenario of this is that you keep your soul, you keep your natural genetic energy, you stay as like this feminine woman as you were born to be. And you also have beautiful, healthy children that you're looking after. You've also attracted like a wonderful man. And women say like, this is like really rare and everything. It absolutely is. I, I won't bullshit you. I won't tell you that this is easy. Maybe I'll make like a separate video if there's enough like, um, you know, like desire for this. If I see a bunch of comments and this has really helped like a bunch of young women, I'm really trying to help like, you know, the 13 to 16 year old girls here. If I'll just give you a quick piece of advice, like based on, okay, well, let's say you want a, the full time mother feminine energy. How would you even make that into a reality? 
basically you'd need to attract a kind of man who could afford all of like the finances by himself because you won't have like a two earner household so when you guys like have a house what's normal these days is like both man and women work and so they both bring like their own incomes you'd need to attract the kind of guy who's making so much money that it wouldn't stress the family that you weren't working and you'd also need to attract the kind of guy who'd actually like want you to you know be a stay-at-home wife as you do you wouldn't want to attract someone who like would want you to go out and work right to do that it all depends on how much value you bring to the table. It depends on like how attractive you are. And don't just think it's like your appearance. That I won't lie to you, that's quite an important part. You need to be attractive as a girl, honestly. It's just the case. And the, the truth is, even as a guy as well, like, you know, ugly guys, fat guys, if they've got like money and confidence, sure, they can get away with it. But even then, as like women are still attracted to like how a man looks, and just as a man is as well. But that's not the biggest thing. So if you're just attractive, which is what many men uh, are, you know, they're just going for women who are hot. Those same men won't actually want like a serious relationship with just that hot girl. So this is the dynamic of, for example, like there's loads of hot girls out there who are just getting fucked along by like chads and everything. And they're like, you know, they, they're always like kind of pissed off at relationships. You probably know that you probably know like some absolute gorgeous girls who really like when you think about it, they're so pretty. They should be able to get into like the perfect relationship, but they'll often always complain about guys because when you're just pretty and not bring in the other things which I'll tell you about guys will actually like date you kiss you sleep with you but they won't commit to you no intelligent man will commit to a girl who's just hot they she needs to bring a few other things so you want to be attractive basically you want to be like in shape you want to be working on your physique because that's something you've got quite a lot of control for you want to be like keeping your appearance as best as you can you already know this and I don't want to put more pressure on you because I know like women have a lot of pressure with when it comes to your looks and your makeup and everything right you already know a lot of that what I like focus on myself with guys which is what i can tell you is building your physique is your controllable version of this so if you as a girl start really getting into the gym and specifically get into weightlifting and it, whatever like limiting beliefs you have are scary or you know, i don't want to get too big but you specifically just train your legs especially your glutes i don't mean to like sound like a pervert or anything but this is like it's gonna make you literally like an extra one or two out of ten more attractive which is huge by the way in general Every point out of 10 that you go higher in attractive, you can attract like 10 times more people. So if you go from like a five out of 10 and there's like three guys who like you, if you become a six, there'll be 30 guys. If you become a seven, there'll be 300 guys. That's like your pool of options there. And so go into the gym and build in a really good physique and really increase your attractiveness by solid like two or three or even four points, depending on like where you started from. So I'd highly recommend that's something that you start getting into. Go to the gym two, three, four days a week and just train your legs really, really hard and specifically like weightlifting, muscle building. You can go watch all the guides and stuff online, but if you really get into that culture, that's a huge thing you can do just for your appearance. I can't give you advice on like makeup or anything, right? But that's the advice I can give you is your, your actual body is like can be very attractive that's one thing but two just that enough again will just get you basically fucked over it'll be guys who are attracted to you but they won't stay committed to you or anything what then you need to bring which many women don't really get told to focus on is like your character and how to behave with a masculine man so the gifts that we can give each other, masculine man to feminine woman and feminine woman to masculine man, is very different from each other. And so you must study some spiritual texts which talk about this kind of energy because in the modern day, we're, like everyone's deluded, young people and young women, young guys, that like we're all equal, we're all the same. We're not. It's actually total bullshit. And if you believe that we're all equal, we're all the same, like you won't bring that anything that special imagine like how how valuable that guy is going to be who makes a fuck ton of money and he's like you know like a father figure and everything right he's going to be like a pinnacle of man right he doesn't just want someone who's like him he wants someone in a weird way who's the opposite of him in general we're attracted to the opposite sexual energy so if i'm like a really really masculine man i'm attracted to a really really feminine woman a really feminine woman is attracted to a really masculine man and like let's say a kind of a feminine woman but she's closer to the middle is kind of attracted to this kind of man here you need to basically push your feminine energy to the side to be the opposite of this kind of guy that you want to attract because the kind of guy you want to attract the one who's pretty successful and also wants you to like stay at home with the children he's a very masculine man isn't he he's not going to be like a feminine little soy boy low testosterone kind of guy is he he's going to be a very masculine man which means that you need to become very feminine yourself 
I'd love to give you like a few things to be more feminine, but it's weird because it's like being more feminine is so vague because it's not like it. It's kind of counterintuitive if you set a smart goals to become more feminine. It's that's kind of like going against the feminine energy. With the feminine energy is to just sort of relax in your body and like sort of to play, to sing, to dance, and to realize the most important thing in your life is love. That's been deconditioned out of you and you've been told that the most important thing is like your education and, and making money. Now, 100%, a very important thing is real education, real learning, advancing yourself, amazing. But obviously, like, the education system isn't, like, real education. It's basically just your path to make money in this world. It's, it's like, that's a whole separate topic, but isn't it fucking crazy how, like, all of the school system wasn't actually to teach us important things. It was just to kind of, like, make us workers, make us employees. It's just incredible. So your education is probably still your priority in the sense of like your growth as a woman and your ability to be intelligent and to learn and to, you know, become more feminine. That's awesome. So these things should be like your priority. I I wish I could tell you guys, there's three things to be more feminine, but I don't really know them because I've not studied it. But what I can tell you is like the resources you can go to like learn more. So if you want to understand masculine men, and then kind of intuitively think to yourself, okay, if I'm the opposite of this, then I'm feminine. The book, The Way of the Superior Man by David Dada is what you can read to understand masculine men. If you want to understand what the kind of relationship, like the best kind of relationship looks like, then the book Intimate Communion by David Dada will tell you about the next level, like the next generation of relationships. Basically, like the first kind of relationship was this sort of empowering masculine tyrants with the feminine house, like housewife. Now the new generation is like the 50-50, like depolarized, limp dick, low testosterone kind of relationship where like man and woman are just kind of friends these days. And that's like, that's not helping anyone. That's very toxic. And this is what most people's relationships are like. This was like the curse of like equality basically telling people who are the opposites of each other that they're actually the same is absolutely like stupid. And the next generation of, of relationships will be in, or if people reach that stage is intimate communion. When, when man realizes he needs to bring his masculine energy and a woman realizes she needs to bring his feminine energy. And that specifically both are as important as each other because the first generation of the, of relationships the woman's feminine energy wasn't seen as important. It was just the man's sort of masculine purpose and, and direction. So the book Intimate Communion by David Dada, uh, you can study that. And that will explain to you like a lot of what feminine energy is, what masculine energy is, and how they come together. I wish there was someone like a YouTuber I could send you to. Remember what I said? If she's posting consistently to YouTube, she's not feminine even if she seems it. So for example, if there's got like some woman that you watch right now, and obviously you can tell which kind of female content creator is masculine or feminine. If she's like shouting at you and telling you like you don't need a man and that you need to go and like learn how to make money. Obviously she's on the fe masculine side and you don't want to listen to her. But the thing is sometimes it's a bit tricky because I can imagine this right now. I don't know any, but I can imagine this. You could probably go and find a bunch of like women content creators who are mothers who look so wholesome, who've got children and everything they still have a lot more masculine energy than you probably would want. It's this weird counterintuitive because there can basically be no authentic feminine content creators because the game of content inherently means that you have to be masculine for it. So if there's like some, some mother that you watch who's got 500k followers or 100k followers or something, it's like she's not as feminine as she makes out to believe. If she seems feminine in the video, she's basically like like putting it on and she her actual natural energy is way more masculine. So it's just like, it's so hard basically just go and read the books that I've suggested. Start there. Keep this in your mind. And this can just be like one step in your journey. This isn't going to be the entire thing that you have to do for the rest of your life, but at least this can cause like a start, a chain of reaction beliefs in your mind to start pursuing more of the feminine path that you feel is more right for you. It's going to be tricky, but at the same time, what I know for certain is that I have helped million, like hundreds of thousands of guys become more masculine, even though they started life like way more feminine, soft, weak and everything. Like men have been conditioned to be more feminine. Women have been conditioned to be more masculine. And I've helped so many guys overcome that conditioning and be more masculine. So I know for a fact that if it works for men, it probably does work for women too. And so you can be more feminine and create that kind of lifestyle that you want. I'll see the comments of this video. And if it seems like 
this advice was like really needed then i can consider making almost like a guide for women to be desirable to the kind of like top one percent man who would retire you who would what would genuinely want to have children and marry you instead of the kind of like loser guys that you might meet or the kind of like chad high status guys who just fuck you and then not even want anything serious because i think this would be needed I, like all this time i've wanted more female creators but eventually i realized like they just no feminine woman's going to be like blowing up on social media and so um maybe it's weird maybe i have to like be the person who's helping women as well maybe i have to like use my intuition and maybe speak to my girl as well and um maybe make like some educational videos for women because all of my work so far has only been for men i've made like two or three videos specifically for women out of the thousand that i've posted for men but at the same time i do know that one of the things men struggle with the most is relationships. And if there was more feminine women who wanted this kind of ideal lifestyle, then the more men that would be happy to. So it kind of like, it's giving me this, this bolt of inspiration that if I make a bunch of guides that a lot of women find valuable, then I'm actually helping men at the same time. And we're just growing this tribe that we have of like people who want to live this more authentic life. And um, yeah, maybe that is the win-win. So I appreciate you watching this if you are the sort of the young woman and you feel uncertain with life. I'm sorry that you're actually going through this because I know how hard it can be to be around that social pressure to act like the rest of the girls who seem fine with being masculine. Stay true to yourself because even though you might be able to make a bit more money if you go and like pretend you're someone else, it it's... I think you'd hurt yourself a lot more than you'd gain randomly getting some job that you don't like or, you know, going to university to study something for like a career that you don't even want. I think that risk of just trying to be as feminine as possible and thinking to yourself, this is a risk because I'm not developing like ways to make money. I think that is probably going to be so much better off for you. And trust me when I say that, I know you probably don't know much of me, but I'm working like so hard to create like more of those men who would want women like you. I work relentlessly for that. And so <laughs> you're welcome. Now, I'm not saying it like a dickhead, but like I work very hard to develop the kind of men who want these sort of feminine women, but also specifically I develop the men who want to get into real relationships with women like you. Not just like to hook up or to have sex or anything like that, but to really start to go and create like families. And so you might just find yourself like a spot in our community. I hope that helps you. If there's like another woman that you know who's kind of similar to you in this, that, you know, she doesn't fit in with this masculine world, you could consider sharing this video with her. It would help me as a creator, which is like, I don't really need more like subscribers or anything. You can go see how many subscribers I have, but it just kind of like, it might help some woman that you know, if you give her this valuable video. I end all of my videos with a phrase, which is perfect for men, but it's not for women. So the phrase is do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. That phrase encapsulates discipline and it's perfect for masculine men. So that phrase for guys, awesome for you if i had to create like a phrase to say at the end of videos if i made one for a woman what would i say remember to keep love as your priority Mwah.